In the last video, we kind of looked at how to set up the clock. Um, we are using an example from the Freescale Cup wiki called Clock Setup Systicc. Um, this video, we're going to kind of look at the some other parts of the uh, you know the code here. And the next thing that we're going to look at is a basic general purpose I/O example of you know how do we twiddle a port. Um, so. We're going to start once again from this uh, clock setup code. Yeah, this example code will show you how to essentially twiddle a pin. Um, there are no spare LEDs on the quick stick. Their, their LED is a, a big LCD display. We're not going to try to use that, so we're just going to try to toggle a pin. So we're going to call init clock um, to get our, our clock set up correctly. Um, for a minute, we're going to ignore this init sys tick. Uh, we're going to look at that in another video. Um, what the init sysTick does is uh, sets up the sysTick timer in the ARM core, and it gives us a nice delay function um, in the sysTick code. Uh, we're just going to assume that it works, and we're going to leave it alone for now. And I just kind of want to focus on how we, you know, how we go ahead and, uh, you know, set up a pin. So to use any peripheral, the first thing you have to do is make sure that it's clock you know, is enabled. Everything in the quick stick is, um, I'm sorry, the Kinetis is synchronous logic. It needs a clock to run. And the Kinetis was designed to, you know, uh, be suitable for low power applications. So you want to be able to shut things off. So the first thing you want to shut off to turn something off is the clock. Well, to do that, within the system integration um, module, there is... clock gating registers and these clock gating registers are uh, just where you go to enable or disable um, you know the clock so for example all of the ports are in uh, the fifth uh, clock gating control register and you find the bit and you kind of set the one uh, uh, for, for what you want so there's port A port B you know port C and so, so on and so forth so what I do is, you know, the first thing I do is just simply enable all of the ports, uh, A, B, C, D, and E. Um, now, once you've enabled the clock, the next thing you have to do is make sure the physical pin on the, on the device is, is actually set up. So we are going to look at um, one particular pin, port A, uh, you know, number 17. So what I'm going to do is, so if we look at, uh, let me grab the data sheet. So within any of these, you know, the, the, these devices, everything comes out to a pin. Uh, whether it's a timer, a UART, well, at its lowest level, um, you know, you, know you, you kind of have, you know, a chip, you know, with a bunch of pins. Now, A17, uh, you can kind of look, it's physically at uh, pin 69, but A17 can do a lot of different things. Within the data sheet for the K40, there is a table that tells you all of the different functions a pin can have. And a generic port I.O. is not necessarily the default behavior. So there is a signal multiplexing um, kind of table, and we're going to go down and find A17. So it's pin 69, here's A17. And you notice uh, its default is actually an A to D converter input. Notice here's all the other stuff it can do. It can be an I square S um, clock input, uh, flex bus output, uh, a control signal um, for UR, a spy signal. But there is an alternate configuration. It's alternate one for that port. There's up to eight alternate uh, functions for each pin on the chip. So let's just remember that. So the first thing we want to do is set that up. Now what's kind of cool about the Kinetis is that uh, every every pin has what's called a pin control register. Um, it makes it actually pretty easy uh, to, to set up a pin. Other microcontrollers really bury um, uh, I'm sorry, really bury 
you know, how you, you know, enable the, these alternate functions. On, on the Kinetis, it's pretty simple. So under signal multiplexing in the uh, reference manual, it kind of describes, you know, uh, you know, once again, how things are, you know, multiplexed. It kind of repeats the data sheet, but it kind of talks about port control. Now, every port um, has what's called a pin control register. So let's go to pin control. And what you can do with a pin control register is set up, you know, its drive strength, if it has to do more current, if it has to default pull up or pull down. Um, you can put an input filter to kind of detect glitches and filter out glitches uh, and set up the, the, you know, the, the, the pin mux. Now let is, let's go to the register definition. You notice if we find the pin control register, the PCR, it kind of defines in a generic way. Port X, so that could be A, B, C, or D, and PCR N. Well, there's up to 32 ports, um, pins per port. And every pin has this register, and it's the same. Now, what's cool about it, a port, not only can we use it for GPIO, regardless of the function at the port, we can actually have an interrupt on that pin. Uh, whether it's a UART or whatnot, so if something, if we want to detect anything changing on that pin, we can. What I want to look at right now are, are two different things. Uh, the pin control MUX, it's bits 8 through 10, and this is where you set up the, the, the alternate, um, you know, what you want the pin to do, and that's where you look in that uh, table, and you can kind of set up the drive strength. If you're trying to drive like an LED or any more current, you can kind of set this, um, set this pin. Or I'm sorry, this bit. So the first thing I do is I want A17. There is a little uh, label on the quick stick on the top side called SIN, um, an input for a spy. Uh, you can find it on the quick stick schematic. Um, what I'm going to do is there's a nice macro in the header file that allows the port PCR mux. We select that value and then we can simply OR it with the bit for the mask. So this sets up the, um, you know, the, uh, the high drive strength. Now once you set up a pins function, if we're using it for general purpose I.O., we have to uh, set up the data direction register. So what we're going to do, we got to specify it as either an output or an input. So in the data sheet, uh, we have to go to now that we've set up the port, we have to set up the general purpose I.O. functionality. So chapter 51 has that. And you can kind of read through here. There's a bunch of different functions. But uh, we're going to go to what's called the DDR register. And it tells you that if you set a bit in this register, um, say, say bit 17, that means... Uh, you know, that particular uh, GPIO is set up as an output. So if we want to drive an LED, it has to be set to a 1. So what we do is uh, we do a bit set by doing an OR, and I say, I want the 17th bit. Remember, this is just a cute way. If we take the value in 1 and shift it over 17, we'll get the proper mask for the 17th bit. Uh, once we do that, we're, we're kind of ready to use the pin. Now, what I do is that you could manipulate the pin with, um, you could look in the data sheet, I'm sorry, the reference manual, and you're going to find out there's a data output register. Writing to that register will kind of set the pins uh, according to whatever you write in here. Um, but the cool thing about the Kinetis is that if you know, if you just want to set a bit, you don't have to use necessarily AND and OR logic on the, the port I.O., they have dedicated port set, port clear, and toggle registers. And the way they work is, if you want to say toggle a bit, writing a bit in the proper position, say 17, to the toggle register will toggle it from its state. If you want to clear a bit, writing a 1 to the clear register will clear that bit. Set works the same way. Writing to the set register clears the corresponding bits they have set. Um, it's a really fast way to uh, uh, to toggle I/O. So I just want to toggle this register. I'm sorry, toggle um, bit 17. So I go GPIO A, then hit the 
T, uh, PTOR register, the toggle register, and I tell it I want bit 17. This is this acute mask for bit 17. Uh, so you could grab a scope at this point, uh, load it in, and you should see uh, general purpose uh, port A, um, GPIO A, pin 17 toggling. Um, it should do it a half second uh, rate. We kind of increment counter. But but there you go. So read through the comments in here. It kind of just reiterates what I said. But this just gives you an idea of how to set up a, a you know a general purpose IO pin.